Hi folks, we're going to take a look at some of the uh, review questions for the Unit 4 test that's coming up. Uh, we're going to start with the first three questions from the uh, second review quiz. Uh, so question number one uh, gives you a line that has a slope of negative 4 over 3 and contains the point 8, negative 5. And they want us to determine two other points on the line. So uh, there's a long way of doing this and that would be to first find the equation of the line and then use the equation of the line to determine other points. But there's an easier way. Now I want us to recall that we've got three ways of thinking about the uh, slope of a function. Okay, in particular the slope of a linear function. So one way is to think of it as the amount that y changes every time x goes up by 1. So we can certainly use this to help us find other points. So for example, if we went from 8 to 9, we know that the y values would go down by 4 over 3 units and then you could keep doing that to get other points. Having said that, that means you have to work with uh, fractions. So I'm going to take another view of uh, the slope, and I'm going to remember that the slope is the rise over the run, or you can think of it as delta y over delta x. So the numerator, in this case here, we'll take the numerator to be negative 4, would represent the rise, meaning going down by 4 and the denominator would represent the run, so the x values going up by 3. So what this says is that as the x values go up by 3, the y values go down by 4. So if I wanted to generate, say, a second point here, I would take my x value and increase it by 3, and then the y value would have to go down by 4 units, so negative 5 minus 4, and that would give us a second point, 11, negative 9. And then we can repeat to find a third point using the one we just found. So here, as x goes up by 3, the y value goes down by 4. So here we would have 14, and negative 9 minus 4 is negative 13. Okay, so there you have it, how you can find other points on the line given a slope and a point. Okay, so we'll now go to question two. So it says that a line has a slope of five and x and x intercept of negative three, and they want us to write the equation in point slope form. So if we did want to write it in slope intercept form, that would be y equals mx plus b. Uh, we would realize that uh, we need the slope and we need another point to find the b value. Now notice here that they don't give us another point explicitly, but they do tell us that the x-intercept is equal to negative 3, meaning that it crosses the x-axis at negative 3, and we know that when you're on the x-axis, the y-value is 0. So implicitly, they did give us a point on this line. We know that negative 3, 0 will be on the line. So point-slope form looks like this. So y minus y naught, which represents the given y value, in this case here, 0, equals the slope times x minus x naught, where x naught represents the uh, x value of the point that's known, in this case here, negative 3. Now, as a way to remember point-slope form, you notice that it looks a lot like the formula for uh, the slope of a line. And that's exactly where it comes from. Because if you take this x minus x naught, divide it to the other side, what do you get? Delta y over delta x equals the slope. So a good way to remember point-slope form is it comes from the slope formula. So now let's input our numbers. So we've got y minus the given y value, which is 0. And the slope, which is given to us, is 5. And then x minus the given x value which is negative 3. Okay? Now this is what point-slope form looks like. Uh, and we do want to do some simplification. For example, writing y minus 0 is not very helpful. We might as well just write that as y. And we don't like to see the subtraction of a negative number. We can simplify that to x plus 3. So this here would be the equation in point-slope form. Okay? So no need to distribute unless you're being asked to find slope-intercept form or if you needed to find the y-intercept quickly. Okay, let's now look at number three. So number three, we're given two points that are both on the same line, and this line has a slope of three over four. 
We notice though that these points contain an unknown n, and that's what we're looking for here. So it might not be obvious how to solve this problem, so what we want to do is try to find something that relates all the information that's given. So we have two points and we know the slope. So we have to think of something that connects those three things. And what we have is the formula for slope, which is m equaling delta y, meaning the difference in the y values, over delta x, which is the difference in the x values. So what we're going to do is use this equation to create a new equation that hopefully will help us solve for n. So at this point here, we're just going to input what we know, and we're given the slope. So that's 3 over 4. And that's equal to the difference in the y's. So since 13 is larger, I'll choose to start with the second y value. So we have 13 minus 5. And then in the denominator, since I chose 13 to start with the numerator, I'm going to have to start with 3n plus 7. Now this is where we have to be careful. Remember our algebra rules. Because I have 3n plus 7, and I need to subtract the other x value. I need to subtract the whole x value, meaning that I need brackets around that second expression. Okay? You don't put the brackets, you're going to make a mistake. So let's simplify this. So we have 3 over 4 equals 13 minus 5 is 8. And now I'm going to do this in my head in one step, but if you need to write a second step in order to simplify this, uh, certainly go ahead. So we have 3n minus n, so that gives us 2n, and then we've got 7 minus negative 1, and 7 minus negative 1 is the same as 7 plus 1, so that's going to be 8. Okay, now what we end up with here uh, is an equation with a fraction on either side, and I'm hoping that we remember that when we solved uh, ratio problems, when we had a proportion, we had a nice easy way to solve these types of problems we cross multiplied, meaning we multiplied the 4 to the 8 and then the 2n plus 8 to the 3. Okay, so I'll start with this uh, second multiplication that I spoke about. So I need, need to multiply 3 by this denominator. Again, I have to be careful because I need to multiply the whole denominator. So it's 3 times 2n plus 8, make sure you put that in brackets, equals 4 times 8 is 32. And then I end up with a fairly easy linear equation to solve. So I distribute. So 3 times 2n is 6n. 3 times 8 is 24. And now I can use opposite operations to solve. So 6n equals 32 minus 24. So 6n is equal to 8. And then n is equal to 8 divided by 6. And of course, I expect that to be simplified. So 8 over 6 can be simplified as 4 over 3. And there we have it. We found the n value that solves the given problem. Okay, so next we're going to solve uh, number 6 from the review assignment. So here we have a table, and we're told that it's a linear relation. So we can assume everything um, that's standard about a uh, linear relation. And we have to determine the missing values. So we're missing a y value here and an x value here. Now, given that the x values are all over the place, uh, they're not really following a nice pattern, uh, the best way to solve this uh, question is probably to find the equation. Okay, so first thing to find the equation of a line, I know that I need uh, two points. So I need to pick points for which I know both the x and the y values. So I'm going to pick the uh, second point and the fourth point. So first, let's start by finding the slope. So delta y over delta x. And so we've got uh, 26 minus negative 14. So notice here I don't have to start with the uh, second one. It just seemed to uh, be a little easier to start with the 26. But we have to keep in mind that because I started with the 26, when I find the delta x's, I have to again start with the negative 3, the x value that corresponds to the 26. So this is negative 3 minus 5. Okay, and we solve this, and 26 plus 14 is 40, and then negative 3 minus 5 is negative 8, and so our slope is negative 5. Now, 
I think most of the time we've solved this by finding the B value, but I figured this might be a good uh, way to practice point slope form. So I'm actually going to find uh, the equation using point slope form. Okay, so we remember that point slope form is y minus y naught equals the slope times x minus x naught. Okay, so we already know the slope is negative 5, so again we have to pick a point. So I'll pick that point negative 3, 26. So y minus the known y value, in this case here 26, uh, the slope is negative 5, and then we have x minus the known x value, which is negative 3. Okay. Now, in order to actually solve for uh, some of these values, I think it'll be easier to simplify this equation. So we have y minus 26 equals negative 5 times x plus 3. Okay, I'm going to want to isolate for y. So I'm going to bring that negative 26 to the other side. It'll become positive 26. But while I'm at it, I'll try to save myself a step, and I'll distribute that at the same time. So negative 5x. Okay, minus 15, and then plus 26 by bringing that to the right-hand side. So simplified, we have negative 5x, and we have negative 15 plus 26, which is equal to 11. So now that we have the equation, we can use that to find the missing values. So I'll start by finding this missing y value. Since I know the x value, I just have to input it into the equation. So negative 5 times 14 plus 11. Okay. Now on a test, since you have access to a calculator, you might as well do this with a calculator, but let's uh, try to do it in our head. So we've got 5 times 10 is 50, and 5 times 4 is 20. So 50 plus 20 is 70. So we've got negative 70 plus 11, and that brings us to negative 59. Okay, so there's our answer for, we'll call this A. Okay, and we'll call this value B. So here, we know the Y value, so I'll be inputting the Y value into the equation. So we've got 6 equals negative 5X plus 11. Okay, so now we solve with reverse operations. So this plus 11, bring that to the other side will become minus 11. Okay, 6 minus 11 is negative 5 equals negative 5x. x is equal to negative 5 divided by negative 5, so x is equal to 1. And that will solve b. Okay, so again, find the equation. In this case here, I used point-slope form. I could just have easily have used uh, uh, slope-intercept form and then use the equation to determine the missing values. Okay, so the last question we're going to look at is uh, question 16 uh, from the uh, review assignment. So here we have the quicks that are driving to their vacation home. After driving for 3.25 hours, they are 250 kilometers from the vacation home. So that's important here because we have to know what these values represent when we create our model. Don't forget that I have to indicate what each of the uh, variables represent. So here they're giving us a distance from the vacation home, not from where they left. Okay, let's see if the same thing happens here. Then after 4.75 hours, they were 150 kilometers, again, from the vacation home. So assuming they drive at a constant speed, determine a distance time equation for their trip. Okay, so there telling us that they want us to relate distance and time. So let's try to decide which of these two will be uh, the dependent variable. And usually we think of distance as dependent on the time. So how far you travel depends on how long you're traveling for. Okay, so we could use X and Y, but for this one here I'll use D and T. So we'll say let D be now remember, all these distances represent the distance from the vacation home. So we'll say here, let D be the distance from the vacation home. Okay, and the time will be the time that's traveled in hours, since that's how all the values are given. Okay. 
Okay, and we should specify here that this distance is in kilometers. Okay, so now that we have our variables, we can start uh, finding what we need to determine the equation uh, of our model. So since uh, it's constant speed, meaning the rate of change is constant, we know that we have a linear function that we're dealing with. So the first thing we have to do is find that rate of change, find the slope. So we're going to find the slope, delta y over delta x. So here we have our y values. Now it might help you to actually write the information as points. So if we take a look at this first piece of information, they tell us that it's 3.25 hours and they're 250 kilometers away from home. And then after 4.75 hours, they're 150 kilometers away from home. Okay, so this might help us now write out our formula for the slope. So I'll take 150 minus 250 and divide that by the delta x's. So here 475 minus 3.25. And we end up with negative 100 divided by 1.5. Now, this is not a particularly nice answer when I divide these, but since it's an application type question, the expectation is that you're going to approximate your numbers. So here, this is approximately equal to negative 66.67. Not surprising that it's negative because the distance from the vacation home as they're traveling toward the vacation home should be going down. So you shouldn't be surprised to be getting a negative number. Now, uh, I did the point slope form last time, so let me use slope intercept form this time. Okay, so. I just noticed here that I use delta y over delta x. In reality, I really should be sticking to the variables that I chose to use. So this really should be d delta d over delta t. So I'll correct that there so that I'm consistent. So let's use, so instead of y equals mx plus b, I'm going to say d equals mt plus b. So d and t instead of x and y. Okay, so I need to pick a point, so I'll pick the uh, first point here. I've got uh, 250 is my distance. Uh, my slope is negative 66.67 and then the t value at 250 is 3.25. Okay, and then plus b. Okay, now, in order to save myself, in order to save myself more approximation, I'm actually going to just take this whole thing to the other side so that I can uh, approximate only one. So since this number will be negative, when I bring it to the other side, it'll become positive. So 250 plus 66.67 times 3.25. And now I put that into my calculator and I get 466.68 approximately. Okay, so now we go back and we have all the information we need to create our model. So again, instead of y equals mx plus b, it's going to look like d equals mt plus b. So the distance is equal to the slope, negative 66.67t. Okay plus my initial value, which we found to be 466.68. And since I've already defined my variables up here, there's no need to redefine them. Now, just as a sidebar, can you think, what does that 466.68 represent? Well, it would be the initial value. Presumably, they started from their home, so that must represent the distance between their vacation home and their home in the city. Okay folks, so that's it for now.